One of the funnest things about writing a book is doing the research. And there's two kinds of research that I can think of. First, you got the kind that's got to be done afterward, the whole revision thing, you know. Now, this car just screeched, but it's in the middle of a rainstorm. Would a car screech like that in water? And all those other little things you're looking at to make sure your story is consistent. And then there's the other kind of research, the stuff you do beforehand, and that's the really fun stuff. Because chances are you're writing this book at least partly because you're interested in the subject that you've got to research to do the book for. And that requires a lot of reading, a lot of Googling, a lot of searching of different information around that subject. But you know one of the funnest parts of research is the thinking part. The part where you're taking an idea and twisting it and changing it into something totally new. Now one of the ways I like to do this is to play a little game. And for our purposes, let's call it the what if game. So let's say your character knows how to fly. You know, Superman style. Jump and whoosh and they're off in the air. Now there's a few things you're going to want to think about. For one thing, is this an ordinary mortal? other than the fact that they can fly? Or are they some kind of alien being? And if they are some kind of alien being, or maybe they're advanced by some kind of technology, then what kind of strengthening does their body have, or difference does their body have, that makes it so it can withstand some of the implications of flying? So let's think about some of those implications. For the time being, let's say this is an ordinary mortal, except they can fly. And for simplicity, we're going to say Superman style. Now think hard about this, because some of the little ramifications can be fun to work with in the book. For example, have you ever stuck your head out the window of a car going 65 miles an hour? It's exhilarating, right? It's exciting. It's also hard to breathe. And the pressure against your eyes and nose and everything kind of makes... <laughs> And unless it's a warm season, it's really cold. So imagine your character now jumping up and take off at 65 miles an hour, okay? And they've got this and they're... And of course they're feeling a rush because, well, they're flying. And think about it. What happens to a car at 65 miles an hour? Bugs whack, whack, whack. And what's that going to do to a human head or eyeball if it hits it? And remember, we decided our character is an ordinary mortal. So that'll be something to take into consideration if they're ever flying low. But what if they're flying high above all the bugs and birds? They don't have to worry about that, right? But you got to keep in mind, too, there's going to be a little bit of uh, loss of exhilaration because think about it. Have you ever stood on a skyscraper and looked down at the cars way down below on the freeway? How fast do those speeding cars look like they're going? Yeah very slow. So being that high, racing at 65 miles an hour, is going to feel kind of slow from up there. While they're going, the ground's going, Because keep in mind, in the Superman movies, he's sometimes traveling at 3,000 miles an hour. Which is something to keep in mind, because if your character goes 3,000 miles an hour and is an ordinary mortal, <laughs> death, Kind of reminds me of that scene in Night at the Museum when the little teeny guys are letting the air out of the tire of a car. For them, it's like... <laughs> but then you back out so you're seeing it from a normal person's point of view, and it's like... <laughs> and no other signs of anything. I think that's kind of how it would be flying very fast as an ordinary mortal. <laughs> The people down on the ground aren't saying, it's a bird, it's a plane. They're more like, is that a floating stick? Because remember, to them, way down below, you're not going very fast at all. <laughs> now I mention this not just so that you get your facts straight, but because it can really feed into the story. I mean, if you're wanting a humor aspect to your story, there's all kinds of ways you can go. You also may be able to use it to reveal some character. So when we talk about research, you also have to ask yourself, if this is something that in this world is mainstream, well, how is it going to affect the overall culture and society? Because if everyone can fly, there's going to be some kind of air traffic control system. They'll have privacy issues to deal with, and there may even be tolls for flying over certain areas. The point is, every bit of effort you make to think about these things and come up with the ramifications of what is going on in your story, the more ideas you'll have to work with, and the more fun you can have with it. Research doesn't have to be completely about getting it right. It can also be about seeing things in ways that other people might not think of. Now, of course, this mostly applies before you start writing your story, or before you at least come up with the major plot elements, but it can be fun to play with later. And this is a think tank, right? We think. We try stuff.